OK, well, welcome, Marc-André. Merci d'être ici et d'être là pour discuter euh, le travail de, de Jean-Marc Vallée. Puis, euh, malheureusement, très triste qu'il a décidé très récemment. Uh, in his film Crazy, that you were the star, you played the main character, Zach, is uh, returning to the film festival this year after winning the People's Choice Award of 2006. Um, and is here to honor the work of uh, Valley. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you. Thank you for the, for the invite. Um, so I'm wondering if you can just give us a bit of a, an idea of, you know, what was it like to work with him? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I never really had a relationship with Jean-Marc that was like director actor. Um, we've met when I was eight or nine. I think it was eight. Um, he was casting uh, his second short film called Les Fleurs Magiques, <clears throat> and I uh, I went to his place to audition. Um, I remember that he was. Um, he was telling me because he remembers pretty well the, the 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 casting process, and I didn't really remember well. I remember going to his place and talking with him and everything, but he was like he was probably like early thirties or mid thirties, um, and he uh, he got this kid uh, to read the lines, and then we started talking, and then he realized that you know twenty minutes passed, and he was just talking with this kid, and um, so we we kind of hit it right away on the friendship side and um, I shot in his short film and it was a beautiful experience because I, I started working as an actor when I was three and I, <clears throat> I was working a lot when I was a kid and um, it was the first time when I was shooting with him that I realized that it was it could be really cool to do this job because I was having fun doing it but I was doing soaps and everything and movies here and there but um, but there was something different with this short film because it was set like in the 60s um there was a lot of music that i, I discovered there was uh, it was such a beautiful experience so different than everything else that i did before um and it made me discover so many so much music so many movies um and and my parents and him uh stayed friends so our birthdays were, um, his birthday was the, the March 9th and I'm March 11th. So every year we were going to a restaurant and, you know, having dinner together with his family and my family and everything. So um, for like 10 years after that, we, we kept in touch and, and uh, spent a lot of time and then crazy happened. And then I was 20, I was the right age and I auditioned, I got the part and <clears throat> the whole the whole souvenir of, of, of shooting the movie is kind of a blur. It, it was so intense. And, um, and then after we stayed friends, we traveled for a year and a half promoting the movie and everything. So, you know, my, my relationship with him uh, as a director is, is, um, it's pretty small in, 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 in retrospect, you know, that, um, I remember him as a friend mostly and, and second as a, as an artist, but, He's very, he was very um, gentle and um, um, with his actors, he was spending a lot of time talking with them. And even though he could be all stressed out with a shoot and everything, uh, he was protecting his actors a lot and, uh, and trying to get the best out of them. And I think throughout his, his career, we, we, we saw that he really brought the best out of every actor or actress that he worked with. Um, mm. He was playing a lot of music also when we were shooting. So it was the first time for me when I was 20 shooting crazy that I was shooting scenes with literally music playing in the background or starting the scene with music and then um, cutting the sound. <clears throat> so we just get the feeling of how it's going to be once edited and everything. Um, yeah, he was working differently than other directors. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought up the music because that's definitely something that comes through not, you know, his film crazy, but so many of his other films, mm -hmm. just this, this powerful soundtrack and it's, uh, it's clear that it's a carefully chosen timing of the music in the story. Yeah. 
yeah, he was he was literally uh, uh, writing music into his scripts. Um, I remember reading Crazy for the first time, and you know, all the songs were there. There was even more songs, you know, songs that he didn't get the rights to. And um, but mm. but it's been like this forever. And I remember when I I, I tried to write a script a couple of years ago, and it was taking so much time because I was writing it the same way that I was reading his scripts with with music and timings because. When you were reading a, a, a script written by him, there was the beginning of, of a scene and there was like this song starts there. And then like in the middle of a, of a dialogue, <clears throat> there was, you know, music fades out and everything. Everything was um, timed uh, into a script. And I was like, it's so heavy to write and it's difficult. And he was like, well, just write, the, you know, just write the story and then you can play with the music and everything at the end. Um, but it was there all the time, uh, the, the music. And, and Jean-Marc always wanted to be a DJ or a rock star. He, you know, he was a failed musician. And, and, uh, and, and you can see that in, in, in his art because he was writing his scripts and editing the way a DJ is putting music and, and you know, mm -hmm. mixing. Mm -hmm. That's so amazing that you say that too. And like, I'm just thinking, you know, cause I'm, I'm thinking this is, he's such a powerhouse creator, you know, more than mm -hmm. director, but creator. And um, describing your process, I'm starting to see his legacy come through. It's a totally different process of writing, like a script writing, filming, just yeah. using that music in process. And, you know, his approach to the actors, like the, almost like, uh, yeah, like he's sort of a multi-passionate person, creative person using film as his main vehicle to express of expression. Yeah, yeah. I mean, music was really important, um, and and uh, you know, throughout the years that we've known each other, pretty much all my life, we we exchanged a lot of emails. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I went through the, all the emails that we we sent to each other in the past like 16 years and uh, <clears throat> and it's just playlists of songs so i was listening to a lot of music when i was especially in the tw in my 20s and i was sending him like every month like 10 15 artists or songs you know uh, and he was sending me stuff and we were exchanging music that way and and it's incredible the 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 road those those songs took because you know i, I remember sending him Sigur Ross or um, Alabama Shakes or Villagers. Um, and then, you know, in Big Little Lies, there's Villagers and he even took the, the, uh, the, the singer to, to sing, um, to be the voice of one of his actors. And um, Alabama Shakes ended up in, in Big Little Lies, Sigur Ross um, in, in Café de Flore uh, and, and in, um, in Young Victoria at some point because they rewrote the whole uh, score to, to it. But at first he worked with Sigur Ross on it. And um, yeah, it's, it, it's it, it. I remember I, I auditioned for him <clears throat> for, um, for Young Victoria just for fun, because I was in London at that moment and uh, he was there doing casting. He was like, hey, just come in, just, you know, just audition. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't really speak English well enough to play uh you know a, a, a british so um but I, I went nonetheless and um and at the end of the audition he just uh, it was with emily blunt and he just put a Sigur ross song and he was like just look at each other and you know just be in love and it was like a two minute or three minute scene improvised of just us listening to music being being inspired by it and 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 in characters and and it was it was um, I've never seen that before or after, um, but yeah he was he was uh, he was like a choreographer in some way you know really inspired yeah. by the music and uh, yeah and it seems like he could see people really deeply and yeah but I think he realized that music kind of touches something inside of everyone and. Mm -hmm. um, in a way that you know words cannot really do the same thing you know you 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 listen to a song he has the same relationship with 
he had the same relationship with music that we we had when we were teenagers and you know being in the room in front of your mirror singing and you know just just yeah. just just being into the music and the music speaks for us and um and that's why I think we we always exchange music because I have the same relationship with music. I, I still listen to music now the way I was listening it to when I was a teenager. So, um, yeah. yeah. And that, that makes me think of the scene in Crazy when Zach is like Ziggy Stardust, you know, and he's just totally floating away on the music and it's like reality snaps him back. But yeah, I actually had a question for you about Crazy. Because I, you know, I rewatched it again um, after many, many years, and it hit me so hard, like again, you know. And it's like seventeen years later, the story is just so strong. The relationships are so powerful. The struggles that they experience, you know, and like, I'm wondering if you could just speak to that. Like this film is holding up; it is strong, and I'm wondering if you can just speak to that work. In particular, you know. Yeah, I think the movie is still relevant. Um, you know, and, and the fact that it takes place over three decades uh, um, makes it timeless in a way. Uh, it aged well, and I, I I saw the movie when it came out uh, doing promotion, and then I never watched it again up until a couple months ago when there was a special screening, um, and. Um, and I was watching it with the eyes of a 37 year old and, and not a 20 year old anymore. And I didn't really recognize myself physically that well. So I could kind of forget myself and just enjoy yeah. the movie. And, yeah. um, and I was watching it for, for the first time with the eyes of a parent also, because uh, I have a kid now and, and I was really, really touched by you know, the relationship with between the parents and the kids and um you know the actors are are really amazing every single actor in the movie is, is doing an incredible job and and uh, and i you know it's funny because for many years people always talk about me in the movie and and i had in a way the easiest job because the whole script is is, is built around my character to make it look amazing and 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 being special and uh, um but i was just there and i and, and and when i watched the movie again i i, I realized how you know pierre lebrian playing the older brother and and Michel Côté and daniel Prou, like all these actors are doing such an amazing job with really difficult parts um a lot of layers to play and and um and it was tough because we we started the shooting with big scenes and you know, Jean-Marc had, had been working on this project for almost 10 years before we started shooting. And um, we started shooting the, 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 all the Christmas scenes and everything with a lot of extras. Um, props were, you know, just running around with lighting cigarettes and putting smoke everywhere and the food. And, and it, the first two weeks uh, were really, really difficult for Jean-Marc and for the whole crew. Um, and I remember after two weeks, the producer, Pierre Evin, had this amazing idea of just leaking the rushes to the rest of the crew. So he made everything that we shot so far available for the whole crew to watch. So there was like DVDs running around and, and then everyone saw what Jean-Marc was trying to do. And they all realized that we were doing something really, really special. And... And it was tough for the crew or big days. And uh, Jean-Marc was really demanding because he knew exactly what he wanted. And, and there was a, like the, that moment was like a turning point because everyone realized what we were doing and everyone just jumped in and gave everything that they had mm -hmm. uh, to a point where the last day that we had the the main house the family house where we were shooting all the you know from 60s 70s 80s whatever um we had to give it back uh so we were doing extra time extra time we're shooting till like one in the morning or something and that night daniel who plays the mother got a call <clears throat> and um her mother was uh, in the hospital dying 
Like they literally called her saying she doesn't have much time left. So, um, so uh, someone from production took a minivan and brought her to um, the hospital and waited for her. So she said, can say goodbye to her mother. And uh, we, we shot stuff around her. And then she came back and finished the night because we had to. But everyone, uh, I mean, I, 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 I think of, of, um, of Danielle that night often whenever there's a problem on set and people are like fed up or whatever. And I'm like, well, Danielle went to say goodbye to her mom and came back and did her job. And, and, and she did it because she's amazing and professional and everything, but she did it also because she knew that we were doing something special and it was important to, uh, to finish it, finish it up, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I mean, I read about Valet's like, we'll say dedication to detail rather mm -hmm. than perfectionist because it, because after you describe that, the vision he had and the, it was just the precise vision to bring this to reality, you know, and to create it and that he was yeah, able to. And I think, I think he, he, um, it was a great thing that he started working in the States because he had so much more budget, so more time to be able to do exactly what he wanted. You know, when, when they were shooting uh, Sharp Objects or, or Big Little Lies, he had, I, I don't know exactly, but like something like 15 days per episode, you know, oh. here, you know, like we, they, were sh they were having a lot of time to do exactly what he wanted take time to shoot, take time to explain what he wants, um, to have the right angle and, you know, the, the, the right lighting and the right performance. And, and, you know, when you shoot a series here in Canada, um, I don't know in, in the rest of Canada, but, but in, in Quebec, we, we have like maybe three days, just, you know, four yeah. days per episode sometimes. So it's tough. Um, so I was happy to see, and, 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 you know, I, I had dinner with him, um, before the the pandemic started and and uh, and he was um very zen and very um i saw um i saw my friend uh the same friend that i had when i was a kid you know that was happy doing his job and um and felt very lucky to be able to do it that way he wasn't like <clears throat> trying to create like a a, a a name for himself or, or, or anything. He was, you know, he wasn't fighting against anything. He was just happy to be writing scripts and shooting in the best possible environment. And, uh, and I was really happy for him. Uh, it was, uh, it was a great time. It, it's, it's, um, it's really sad because, you know, he was working on a really special project, very important for him and he never got the chance to, to finish it. Wow. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, a real sign that of someone who's mastered their craft when they get to that Zen place, you know, yeah. and it's like, I've got nothing to prove and I have space to do this. And it's, you know, just thank you so much for, for being here and for, for sharing all these, you know, close details and of your friendship, especially with uh, Marc-André Vallée. And, you know, I'm so sorry that you lost your, your friend and certainly uh, the creative world is definitely will be missing him and his beautiful well, contributions. You. I appreciate it. And, and thank you for putting the spotlight on, on his work because uh, I think he, he paved the way to uh, a whole generation of, of directors to and, and show them that you could dream big and do big things. That's what he did with Crazy. You know, every single production company in, in Quebec said no, they didn't want to produce it because it was impossible to produce. To, and, uh, and it took Pierre Evin, who was starting as a film uh, producer. He was producing other stuff before, but it was his first film. And, and um, he was as crazy as Jean-Marc and decided to hop in. And, 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 um, and it showed to a lot of people that, that you could dream big and, and, uh, and not censor yourself as an artist. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. I think we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks.